Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Michelle Feltis. I'm a physician working in the emergency department at Stanford University. And I'm Dr. Brian Rice. I'm also a physician working in the emergency department at Stanford University. And today's presentation is on personal protective equipment. We all know that diseases spread in hospitals, and the goal of this lecture is to empower you to limit the spread of the disease through proper hand washing and personal protective equipment use. The goal of personal protective equipment, also known as PPE, is to protect providers from an infectious or chemical exposure. However, it's also to protect the patient. Patients may be vulnerable due to pre-existing conditions or illnesses from any infections that we may unknowingly carry into the room when we see them. Overall, our objectives for this lecture is fourfold. Number one, we're going to discuss the proper way to wash your hands and thoroughly clean them. It sounds simple, but there's some details which can save your life. Then we'll discover the different pieces of equipment that go into personal protective equipment or PPE. Um, we'll understand the different levels of PPE, a minimal, a moderate, and a maximal level of protection. And then most of today is gonna to focus on how to don and doff PPE correctly. Hand washing with the proper technique is the single most important thing everybody can do to protect yourself, other staff, and your patients. It can happen in any setting that has access to clean water and soap. You can also use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer instead of soap and water if that is more convenient or you do not have access to clean water. Okay, this brings us to the first video of our presentation. The gloves here represent a provider's bare hands and the red paint will be the soap. And you can see how much detailed work and technique is required to actually cover each and every part of the hands. If you're not careful, uh, don't spend enough time, it's easy to just wash the palmer surfaces of your hands, but you can see individual attention needs to be paid to the backs, the thumbs, and between the fingers. You can also see that with successful doffing technique, our model was able to avoid putting any of the red soap onto her wrists, indicating that she did not further contaminate herself. The most commonly used pieces of personal protective equipment are gloves, as seen in the purple, a triple layer medical mask, um, as seen on the top left, goggles or a face shield, as seen on the top right, and a gown, as seen on the bottom. And as a reminder, a new set of gloves should always be worn by the provider for each patient. In the case of maximal PPE, which we'll discuss later on, you can wear two layers of gloves and change the outer layer for each patient. Next, with the masks, the triple layer medical mask, more commonly known as a surgical mask in the bottom left, is used to reduce the exposure to droplets coming out of the mouth of the person wearing the mask. This mask does not filter most viral particles that the wearer is breathing in, but does block larger particles and provide substantially more protection than a cloth mask would. The N95 masks, as seen on the top, um, there's two different examples there. These masks filter particles that are breathed in by the wearer. However, these masks must be properly fitted to ensure that no gaps exist on the sides. Each mask brand may fit differently, so providers should be fitted for each brand used by your hospital to ensure proper protection. Each time a provider puts on a new mask, the nose piece must be molded to your face. Then that provider needs to check the fit of that individual mask to ensure that no gaps are present before entering a patient's room. Either goggles or a face shield can be worn to protect the eyes of the wearer from being exposed to particles. Viruses, blood, other bodily fluids, and chemicals can all harm the provider when contacting the delicate surface of the eye. Goggles should wrap around to protect the sides uh, of the eyes. Glasses worn to correct vision do not usually provide sufficient protection because they do not provide shielding on the side. Face shields and certain goggle types can often be worn over glasses used to correct vision. A coverall or gown, a head cover and shoe covers are used to protect the provider's clothes, skin, and hair from exposure. When these are available to a provider, they should be used to provide an extra layer of protection. There are different levels of personal protective equipment that we can be used depending on the concern for the type of exposure. Minimal PPE, meaning gloves and a medical mask, should be worn at all times in all patients' encounters. The mask protects the patient from asymptomatic transmission of the infection from the provider, as well as protecting the provider 
in some large amount from any droplets from the patient. A mask should not be shared between different providers because when they breathe on the inside, that would contaminate the mask for someone else to use. The two most commonly used pieces of personal protective equipment are gloves and the triple layer medical mask. Gloves are used routinely in the hospital to cover the provider's hands. These gloves may be sterile if indicated for a specific procedure, but most commonly non-sterile nitrile or latex gloves are used for most patient encounters. Any outer set of gloves should always be changed between patients. When using gloves, if you are concerned that you touched a contaminated surface, you can wash your hands with hand sanitizer while wearing that set of gloves. This is especially important when doffing your personal protective gear. If gloves are visibly contaminated with bodily fluids, they should be changed as soon as possible. For proper donning, wash your hands, then put on the gloves, and then the mask. If you are wearing goggles for a specific encounter, put them on after the mask. For proper doffing, take off the gloves and then wash your hands after you've removed the gloves. You wanna wash your hands every time you touch a potentially infected surface. Again, 20 seconds covering each of the appropriate surfaces. Once you're done washing your hands, you remove your mask. We use moderate PPE in the emergency department for all patients in any isolation room or cohort isolation room all inpatient or in any respiratory areas in the outpatient setting. This personal protective equipment includes an N95 and gloves. Ideally, Eye protection should be used if there's any concern about droplets or splash into the eyes from something like vomit. And so this includes most patient encounters in the emergency department. For proper donning, again, you wash your hands for 20 seconds covering all appropriate surfaces as we've covered previously. The next step would then be to put on your gloves. And once the gloves are put on, the N95 mask. Again, the N95 mask provides a substantially higher level of protection um, for droplets and for airborne particles and should be used in the higher risk areas. Um, this includes emergency department patient visits and inpatient and outpatient care in respiratory areas. The final piece, if available, should be eye protection. Again, the eye protection from goggles is superior to that of regular glasses worn for vision because it has protection on the sides where the regular glasses would not. Those would go on after the mask is placed. For proper doffing of this personal protective equipment, take off the gloves first and then wash your hands to remove any areas of slight contamination that may have occurred when you took your gloves off. Then remove the goggles and then remove the N95 by removing the bottom strap first, followed by the top strap. Then wash your hands again. If at any point before you take off the mask, uh, your hands touch the outer surface of the mask, make sure to wash your hands again before you remove the straps of the N95. With maximal amount of personal protective equipment, we wear eye protection, N95 mask, a body covering such as a gown, gloves, and if available, hair covering and shoe covers. This gets used in the emergency department and the ICU or intensive care unit for any critically ill COVID-19 or other respiratory distress patients. It also should be used anytime aerosolization procedures are occurring. This would be most commonly intubation or other procedures like endoscopies. For proper donning, the first step again is to wash your hands for 20 seconds. Um, you'd also put on shoe covers if they were available at this point, though they're not in the video. The next step is to put on a gown. Following the gown being put on, um, some models have thumb holes and some don't, and it could, should be secured in the back if possible. Two sets of gloves are going to be used in this video, an inner glove and an outer glove to avoid exposing the wrists from any bodily fluids or droplets. You can see that the 
inner glove is placed and then the thumb holes, if they're available as they are in this video, will be pulled over the outside. Next step is to put on the mask. Again, there's two straps on an N95, but this is a slightly different model than we saw in the previous. Um, getting the nose piece to fit, checking for leaks. And then again, even though the doctor pictured is wearing eyeglasses, an additional set of eye protection, which covers the sides is put on. Finally, a second set of gloves is put outside of those. At that point also a hair cover had it been available would have been placed over the top. To properly remove the maximal PPE, you first remove the gown, taking with it the outer layer of gloves at the same time. Then you use hand sanitizer to wash the inner layer of gloves, and then remove the goggles. You wash your hands again, and then you finally remove the N95. Anytime you think that there has been any uh, contamination of the hands or the gloves, wash your hands before proceeding to the next step. These are several complex and interrelated steps. And so if you have the staff, you can assign someone to watch each provider doff and don maximal PPE, looking out for any contamination that can occur. And at the facilities, that the authors work at. There are formal training sessions in how to doff and don PPE, which are done by each provider before they go into patient care areas. In summary, remember that hand washing is the absolutely most important step every single person working in your hospital facility can take. Additionally, using the appropriate personal protective equipment with the appropriate donning and doffing techniques protects the staff and the patient.